All right, so how's everybody doing? Um, today, uh, like I said, I wanted to do more like uh, unit reviews and such for not only um, the Fire Emblem, but Epic Seven as well. And I don't have audio, which just because there's nothing's playing. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So we're gonna go over uh, Summertime Iceria, and as you can see up there, um, the new Angelica. Um, uh, I'll probably just start doing these a little more often. Uh, there's, a, there's a few other things at the end I'll probably talk about that came with that um, the new patch overview or whatever the summary. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll, um, we'll get into it uh, th it's at this point. Hot, see if we can get this open here. here. But I never did like the sea. I'd like to so we can that. skip all this actually oh, until we get to. Let's take a look wow. at the stats. Uh, so she's got 115 speed, which I think is the same as, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's just interesting to compare them, but like, uh, she, she has the same speed as, um, I think it's the same as, uh, what's her name? Uh, Alfelt. Uh, so I don't think she's going to be a speed contester necessarily, which is kind of baked into her kit as we'll see in a little bit. Um, but she's, she's decently, decently fast, right? I think uh, like if you want to be a speed contester, you probably want to be hitting like 120, um, like at least 120, and then obviously you've got things like uh, Sid and and Sid and Akali who are like 128, which is the highest. So that range of like seven speed from 120 to like you know 128, which is the highest I think, or 129. It's probably 129. Uh, from there, that from that the nine points of speed, that's where like the speed contesters are. Everything under that is kind of like you can make it fast and they can you know you can we can make it like 300 speed or whatever and then have them steal first turn um but if if like you know obviously like at a basic level she's not gonna outspeed you know real what's her names um cerises or something like that right because cerises is like 122 uh so you know if you outspeed like really fast people like sir like a cerise or something like that it's usually just because you're out gearing them rather than you know out speeding them for real right so you know that's important to realize so if you if you can outspeed like anyone like anyone with 220 120 and over if you can outspeed them you were probably going to win that no matter what like as long as you were or if you as long as you were you know you had your head on your shoulders while you were drafting whatever you drafted you know as long as it was decent you were going to beat that person anyway but you know if you're watching this video you probably don't have like 300 and something you know 300 plus speed units so at the top end this isn't really valuable to you but at the low end which we're all most of us end up playing uh, sometimes you can outspeed people, so you can you can outspeed everyone with an ice area. Would you want to necessarily? No, not exactly, but uh, the point is, you know, that's their speed. Um, Twelve hundred attack uh, isn't too bad. Isn't too. Is, it's not too high. It's not too low. Um, I, the fact that like we'll see later, she can't crit. The fact that she can't crit, uh, I feel like that probably should have been somewhere over like fourteen, and then she gets the extra twenty percent or thirty percent. I think once you max it out. Um, but yeah, so she has base crit chance, uh, but she can't crit anyway. 30% effectiveness with the 27% from her passive is 57% right off the bat. Um, I think that's pretty good. Uh, obviously, like, a lot of people are going to have a lot of, like, Isarias just sitting around. Um, and, you know, to max to max her out with that, with 57 effectiveness is pretty ridiculous. Because, like, the highest you get on effect resistance, like, like if you were to just, like, let's pretend like we take off all the gear. If you were to just, like, have units pitted against each other gearless... Like you can get fifty seven effective effectiveness, but the highest you can get in effect resistance usually is like what thirty seven forty seven something like that um so that's pretty interesting uh that she has like such a high effectiveness stat already built in um so basically that kind of means that you just want like an attack neck uh effectiveness ring and like a speed boot uh but you, obviously like I said, you don't want like your best speed gear on her, so keep that in mind. you probably want a lot of attack subs just to deal more damage um but her job is mainly just going to be bombing people. Uh, so do I think you should pull for like the, the plus, you know, plus, plus five or like a triple S? Uh, not necessarily. Um, if you're going to pull for any triple S thing, it's probably going to be the artifact because that artifact is pretty good, I think. Uh, but we'll go over that in due time. Well, actually, yeah, I think they show it in here. So yeah, I was like, I'm going to have to go find another video for that artifact. Isekil. 
so yeah, the reason I kind of talked about this S2 was because we were going to talk about it first. So I was like, I'll just go, we'll just go into that um, while we're talking about, um, while we're talking about her stats, because it'll be the first thing they bring up. Uh, so she gets uh, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, so thirty percent extra attack on top of her her twelve hundred and for free, um, which like I said, I think is fine. But I really would have preferred it if she was fourteen hundred and then uh, get another thirty percent on top of that. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, so basically, what this thing does is, it, for one, you know, you, you can you can S one into S three on turn one without any like need for a, a Taga Hells or anything like that. So that's pretty good, especially when we see what her S one is. Um, the caster cannot trigger a critical hit, but attack takes uh, 30, 30 percent after an ally. Except the caster uses a, an attack that targets all allies. Activate suppress can only be activated once every three turns. Now, this is what's interesting because, like I said, a lot of people are gonna you know because a lot of people don't really use any critical thought in this game. They're just gonna try to build her with as much speed as possible and have her try to take first turn, which isn't what you want to do because like she needs like. She's not a single carry unit, right? She doesn't. She doesn't just sit here. You put her on your team, and her by herself is going to destroy everything. She's going to destroy everything, mind you. But you need to have other people around her. Um, and one of the things that I find that I found the funniest was the next coin shop rotation for the ML the ML coin shop, whatever. Is actually Faithless Lyrica, who pairs insanely well with her because Faithless will strip everyone, push everyone forward, and then she'll get another fifteen percent on top of that. Um, now granted, Faith of isn't like the best, but I just thought that was kind of interesting that they're coming out in unison like that. Um, because, especially because Faith of is one of those units that is a first turn contester. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I found interesting. Um, in terms of how, how this whole thing works, obviously once someone goes and, and does their AOE, which is again, like you, you want a first turn person, so... In the video, they'll have Basar, but again, like Basar has a lower base speed, and it's going to be harder to push them to that high. And on top of that, you're probably going to be losing to someone else's like speed contester. So you know, there's problems that come with that. Uh, but I think like Cerise is an excellent uh, choice to go along with her because where Basar uh, strips, debuffs, and then puts him down thirty percent, and possibly stuns with his uh, with if you have him on Abyssal Crown, um, Cerise, like you don't need the pushback because Cerise will go. Decrease their speed, theoretically, right? As long as you, you know, strip and everything. Uh, and then Isaria is going to get pushed up 15%. And again, you don't want to, like, sacrifice... You don't want to have her, like, at base speed, right? Uh, but you don't want, like, your best speed gear on her. You just want her to be as fast as you can get her uh, without making any of your best speed units slow. And at that much speed, usually that 15% is going to help you take that turn. So, and then especially because they're going to be slowed, um, you're going to just, you know, go apply your bombs to everyone after they've been stripped and she doesn't even need to take a turn mind you right like just the fact like suppress happens everyone boosts 15 percent, and she puts two bombs like that in and of itself is already done like she's she did her job like she could just die after this and it wouldn't really matter um but you know like i said there's still more to come so that's kind of what i was like my first impression was just kind of like you want a really fast speed contester so you either want like cerise or Athletica. Uh, some other options, like I said, some RGB options that are more readily available. Well, I guess um, F, uh, not F10, well, Fairy Tale Tenebria isn't, is, I think she's, is she limited? Yeah, I think she's limited. Uh, obviously, she's limited, so, you know, whatever. Um, but you can, you know, if you run Basar, super fast Basars, then you can have her follow up. Or if you run, uh, what's his name? Like, who, who's another fast? uh broman like you know you could run a broman and have him like strip everything and then have her follow up afterwards um having her go first isn't necessarily a good thing it's not necessarily a bad thing but again like i said it's kind of like you got to weigh up your speed gear right like your speed gear is very valuable so who you put it on and why you put it on them needs to be very uh precise so you know putting all your best speed gear on her isn't really going to help very much is is basically what i'm trying to communicate with you uh, so yeah, basically the S2 is basically, it's, it's amazing, right? It does everything you need it to. Um, of course, they can kind of cleanse the bombs off, but, you know, like I said, she is more than just the S2, but the S2 is already in and of itself, like the whole kit.
Okay, let's skip to this. If anybody wants to see the animation. Uh, it's basically just Isaria's S2, like regular Isaria. Which is this. So it boosts everybody 15%. Uh, so let's take a look at this. Um, so this is our S1. Obviously, you can get the free soul burn on turn one, which is pretty good. Uh, especially because it's 20. She basically, like, she basically comes with her own Taga Hells, if you can kind of, like, if you want to say it like that, right? Which is pretty good because she's a ranger and she can't run Taga Hells anyway, right? <laughs> like, it's pretty ridiculous. So on turn one, she gets 20 souls to just soul burn her own thing. Obviously, you can't spend them on anyone else the same way you can with Taga Hells, but a lot of times if you're running a Taga Hell on someone, you want to burn it on them anyway, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that's pretty cool. Um, are you the culprit? So we get a 75, what? Yeah, I think six, so we have 75% chance to spell two debuffs, which is pretty insane. Like the fact that she's going to be kind of fast and I mean, I, I, you probably want like an immunity set on her, but like you can run something like a, uh, like a dual attack set or something, or maybe, yeah, just run her with something like that gets her more dual attacks. Like. 75% chance to just run around like dispelling two debuffs is ridiculous. I, I would have preferred it though if it was 75%. Although it is 75% each to dispel two debuffs. So you're getting, most of the time you should be getting at least one. And if you're lucky, you're getting two. So that, that's kind of what I was, the only thing I was concerned about. Um, but yeah, so the, the, the fact that you just like almost guarantee one debuff dispel um, every S1 is pretty good, um, especially because there's so many buffers out there. Uh, and there's a lot more annoying buffers lately, so things like uh, Kitty Armin and um, <laughs> Elena. Uh, but the fact that it's only one uh, one person at a time is kind of like what holds it back. But you know, still, it's hard to complain about a, a possible two debuffs and almost guaranteed one debuff, um, especially when it grants you an extra turn for free. And given what her artifact does, which uh, let's see if they show it here. No, it's at the end. We see her artifact. Uh, so her artifact, when you max it out, which, you know, if you're going to go after this, you're probably going to want to max it out at some point. Um, but yeah, so when someone doesn't crit, which she's not allowed to crit, uh, you have a 100% chance to just put a bomb on them for two turns. Uh, so this basically means that she can put on, um, when her t when it comes to her turn, ba basically what it means, if I can go back, if I can take that back for a second, uh, basically what it means is that her S3 can get up to three, bom three bombs detonated uh, in one turn. Um, because the S2 will put two, her S1 will put one. If you're in Guild Wars, that's three, you know, that's it, right? That's all three units bombed. Um, if you're in RTA or Arena, obviously there's only three out of the four, but usually there's one that you could probably just kind of leave off for a while. Um, but that's pretty ridiculous. Uh, I guess this is an interesting time to bring up the new bomb mechanics. I, I didn't remember what all of them were, but one of them was mainly just that they made it more consistent how the bombs work because one of the problems with the bombs was uh for one if they had immunity and they blocked the damage of the bomb they would also block the stun so they wouldn't get stunned um not immunity um invulnerability you know, invincibility or whatever the invincibility buff but so that one was that one was fine obviously that was kind of an annoyance i didn't use bombs i don't know who who used bombs um, so I guess, you know, some, someone had been using bombs to figure that out. So glad they got that, the, glad they got on that before they released her. Cause if they were released her and then that would have happened, people would have been pissed. Uh, so fortunately they got on that on top of that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was the more important one where if you, cause before apparently again, like I said, no one used bombs. So we didn't actually know. Well, I mean, some of us, uh, maybe there was someone who did knew, but when you planted a bomb on someone, you had to go through the 15% check for effectiveness to put the bomb on them. And then there was a chance that when the stun, when the bomb detonated and the stun came around, they, that, that was another effectiveness check that you had to pull off. So if anyone who uses some, someone like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Alfelt or um, Falconer Clurry, you know having to pass that many checks is a huge irritance. So now once the bomb is landed, like if you get that first check, then that's it. You don't have to worry about it. Like the bomb will, or the bomb will burst and they'll get the stun uh, regardless of, you know, any checks. So that's pretty good. I think that's the most important change uh, to bombs personally, because that would have been really irritating to have like, 
people, you know, to have to pass two checks like that, because we all know, I mean, that's, you know, 15% is, is a lie, basically. Um, so yeah, this, this artifact gives you a 100% bomb chance on, or, on an S1, I think. Yeah, basic skill. Uh, I was kind of sitting there thinking about who could use this, and I'm not really sure, like, who else could use this, obviously. Like, it's, it's probably best in slot for her. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure who else might want to use something like this. Uh, there's not a whole lot of rangers that are running around with zero crit chance. Um, the only one I could think of off the back of my head is... is um, oh, I forgot what her name was already. The one that we all use, I mean, like, we always throw her away, and then, like, as soon as, like, New Abyss content comes out, we, we pick her back up. Uh, I forgot her name. She's got a lot of poisons, basically, the poison archer. Um... This could be kind of interesting because uh, her S1 is her most valuable thing and you don't put any crit on her because you don't need crit. All you need is the effectiveness for the poisons. So to have her just taking turns and running around like bombing like uh, bosses and stuff in Abyss is going to be pretty interesting. So I think this would be pretty good on her. But other than that, I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure who else could use this. Um, there's not a lot of rangers that are like, oh yeah, I can just, I'm not going to run crit, right? Um... So yeah, that, that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, the other, the last thing I wanted to point out here was this little orb here. It looks like one of the orbs from Fire Emblem, like how little rainbowy it is. I don't know. That was just kind of weird to me. Because funnily enough, this orb here doesn't look like the orb that's in her chest. So I don't know what's up with that. But this, this orb up here really looks like a, a Fire Emblem orb. Uh, speaking of Fire Emblem, I have a summoning video for that uh, I have to do later. Um, let's see what we're doing here. We are looking at. So we're looking at the S1. So again, like I said... Two bombs, so it's a good thing they show this to you because I like it would have been kind of annoying to have like another encounter where they have to do it again. Uh, but so they have two bombs already. She can just soul burn for free, and there's three bombs. And then she s she can you know she can s she can s if you have you know if you have Taga Hells or something, uh, which you probably will if you're having you know if you're running with Oxlots or whatever or her. Uh, so you can you can use her s one again and then like hit Made Chloe if you have enough effectiveness. And that's all four bombs. Um, off of one Taga Hells, and then you S3, obviously, and then, you know, burst them all, and now everyone's stunned, and, uh, the damage off these bombs is pretty insane, actually. So I don't know why, uh, I don't know why they, they chose to soul burn it again, and then just put another bomb on Cecilia. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of funny. Um, they could have just bombed, uh, um made chloe there attacks all enemies with a sword uh flowers decreasing their attack for two turns and increasing their speed so basically the idea here is that um once you get the the soul burn s1 and, and then you go to s3 uh you blow everyone up and then they get stunned and then you give yourself speed now this would have been really ridiculous if you had like like if you imagine like, if that decreased attack was, like, decreased speed, and then she gives herself speed, and then she's just, like, lapping you. Like, she gets a, she gets a turn one stun, and then she just starts getting to lap you, and then starting, and then putting more bombs on you. Like, not, not to mention, so, basically, that's how it is, right? So, turn one, she'll give herself increased attack speed, uh, detonate all the bombs, so they're all stunned, they all take damage. Um, this is only three turns. But then, so then she goes S1, and if, again, you have your, her artifact. So once people are recovering from the bomb stun, you put another bomb on them, and you don't need to detonate it, right? So there's two turns while they're stunned, if you lap anybody, right? So while they're stunned, they get a bomb put on for them for two turns. Um, and then you start lapping people, and by the time your s threes back up, the bombs are there, and they're not stunned anymore, and you can just detonate them again. And then on top of that, her S3, her S2 can refresh faster. We can find it. I'm not such a nonce. Uh, we can find it here. Um, she gets CR push for everybody for AOE attacks every three turns. So it's like, I don't know. It, it's pretty ridiculous. Like, you just like, get ready for a world of chain stunning. Um, fortunately, one of the counters is about to be released in, uh, you know, uh, sinful. Uh, no, actually, uh, was it Angelic Angelica? I guess that's what we're calling her. I don't know. Uh, so she's here. Uh, obviously, one of the bigger counters to this is just going to be Zerato because Zerato is the counter to every debuffer in the game. Um, I think Dil I think uh, Dilibet's going to be doing pretty good. Um, who else? I mean, yeah. So just anybody like 
the problem with with Dilibet is like it's gonna be hard to uh to cleanse by the time she has the bomb explosion. So like, well, she can't. Yeah, she, yeah. Well, actually, that's actually a lot better than I was kind of thinking about it in my head because if, if like like Dilibet doesn't get to go, you you go first and then you you plant like two bombs from her S two. Then she takes her turn. She can soul burn S one, put a bomb on someone, uh, and then maybe Dilibet like triggers her her S two and then cleanses and pushes forward. But it's not her turn yet. Um, and she no longer has the bomb on her. So then we go back to Iceria, who now it's her turn to S3. So she has threes, detonates all the bombs, stuns everyone, and then, you know, obviously um, Dilibet is just chilling there. No bombs, no stun, nothing. And even if her S2 didn't go off, she detonates the bomb, stuns everyone, and then Dilibet's 2 goes off, and she cleanses anyway, right? So I think Dilibet will be pretty good. Um, I'm not sure about, like... Funnily enough, you can't dodge the bomb placement. So someone like uh, like Violet or uh, Remnant Violet are going to have a hard time because they're just going to get the bomb placed on them. Now, the detonation is something different, so I'm not sure. Oh, actually, that's kind of interesting. I wonder. Yeah, I'm not sure how this works. Uh, I imagine it, it doesn't say anything about having to hit them or anything like that. So it, it just says at the end of turn, detonates bombs. So I imagine it this will be probably pretty good against uh, dodging. So they'll dodge the attack, they'll dodge the decreased attack, uh, they'll like dodge the damage. But I think the bomb will still detonate because the bomb also never needs to be. Uh, they don't have to attack to have the bomb placed on them. Though the problem being that the bomb is uh, the S two bombs are uh, random to enemies, so that's kind of troublesome. But that aside, I think this is pretty good. Um, yeah what else was i going to say there was like one more point i wanted to make but yeah you know basically your 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 basic you know units are going to be you know in effect here when it comes to like you know what counters her is just keep in mind you know your zerados your um what's her names uh t Surin, um kind of a tywin but it depends on on who you run with her like if you run uh if you run like cerise with her then that's like a lot of debuffs for a Taiwan to be able to do anything against, uh, especially because a Taiwan's going to cleanse the the Cerise debuffs, and then you're still going to get the bombs on you. So you know, whatever, you're kind of stuck there. Um, but yeah, like anyone who's immune, who's immune to stun, I think the, the what's her name, the uh, we might start seeing that that the light Banshee a little bit more because she's immune to stuns. Uh, but I think we're moving into an interesting place where um, we're, we're getting really heavy debuffers because the, the one we're about to see also has that problem too. Uh, so yeah, that, that was Sunrise Area. I think, obviously, I mean, you know, she's a limited unit, so you got to pull for her no matter what. So, I mean, the question of, like, should you pull is is kind of answered in and of, in and of itself there. Um, her S3, I guess we can look at the S3 animation. Uh, I don't actually like the S3 animation very much, and I don't like the, like, I don't like hearing her complain. 벽폭은 지정된 약화 효과를 즉시 발동시켜서 피해를 입힙니다. Um, I don't know. Maybe it sound like it might sound better in uh Actually, why is Wait, wait a minute. Why is May Chloe stunned? She didn't get a bomb on her. Oh, I guess they Oh, yeah. So she had enough to soul burn like 3 times. Okay. I I, I saw that. Um, but yeah, basically she's going to be pretty easy to build to some degree because all you got to run is like the only stats you need are speed, uh, our speed, attack, effectiveness, and health, right? Four stats, which is like the golden number, right? Because every, every, every piece of gear has four substats. So every piece of gear can have, you know, you just got to make sure it comes with one of those four stats that you need. So speed, health effectiveness and attack uh you could even drop attack if you don't really like i'm not sure how much i think the bombs might do damage proportional to your attack probably i mean i wouldn't doubt it uh but if you if you feel like you just want the stun and you just want her to debuff and 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 cleanse with the s1 like take off buffs with the s1 uh and then you know be whatever you could probably just drop attack and run her on defense and that's still four stats and then you could just make her insanely tanky uh, fast and tanky and then just like constantly bombing people um, so that's another option depending like I said depending on on how the damage scales from bombs I'm not entirely sure how that works yet uh, they probably it probably says somewhere in her s3 description 
like bombs are proportional to her like damage dealt or whatever uh, detonation we need to look at her s3 for that inflicts damage by activating designated debuffs and inflicted on the enemy damage is proportional to the number of turns and number of debuffs yeah okay well never mind then uh, I'm not entirely sure what like how much damage scaling bombs have um, so that's kind of something to consider like if it's a lot then obviously then you know you want to build her with higher attack um, the fact that she comes with attack in her passive and and they took away her crit probably indicates that bomb scale off of attack uh, but it's up to you right like you can you know find a balance of of, of how, how survivable to how much damage you want her to do um, but yeah so like I said any unit that like you can reduce the amount of stats they need to four is uh, is a pretty good unit. Um, some of the harder units to build are the ones that like they need every stat, right? Um, so I think she's going to be coming out like not only is she going to come out like triple S because a lot of people have ice areas, but she's also going to come out very well geared because you can just run her on gear um, that you have left over that probably other people couldn't use because like. You got like insane attack roll, but there was no crit chance or anything like that for whatever reason, right? Uh, so that's something to consider. Uh, but yeah, so enough enough about Isaria, enough about all that uh, all that stuff. Let's let's move on to sinful Angelica here, or uh, Angelic Angelica, At least Angel of Light though. Angelica. Uh, so we can skip all this. Let's take a look at her stats. Uh, so her stats are kind of interesting actually because I mean for one she's a mage because so that's pretty cool uh, which is I thought was kind of interesting because the other two uh, sinful Angelica and regular Angelica are both soul weavers so we got a mage out of the, the third one uh, the other thing that I want to point out though is that now we have regular Angelica and then we have the two the light and the dark version of Angelica uh, does this mean we're gonna start seeing like repeats of other old heroes and start getting like their opposite so are we gonna start getting like are we gonna get like a dark says or something like that are we gonna get like uh, a shadow aramintha or something like that um that's kind of interesting to me uh given you know they got the whole 10 year plan going i mean i, I wouldn't doubt if that's what we're gonna start seeing uh start seeing like light and dark phases cons considering 10 years is a long time so you know if you're gonna drag it out at least duplicate your your moonlight characters um but yeah so let's let's get back to her specifically so we're looking at her stats here she's got less than a thousand attacks so basically what they're telling you is uh she's not a damage dealer she is solely uh here for debuffing and that's about it um funnily enough it's kind of annoying that they took because her stats so you can see down there she has effectiveness and effect resistance i mean like her stats like the people who built the, who were made this game they can they can allot those wherever they want right because those are awakened stats so like as she awakens she gains those stats and for some reason they gave her effect resistance awakenings which i'm not entirely sure what like yeah i really don't know what uh what the point of that is uh but maybe you know maybe someone can tell me why you'd want effect resistance on her now because like no one's gonna build effective well i don't know We'll, we'll take a look at her stats, but yeah, so like I said, less than a thousand attacks, so you're not building attack on her because she's not going to do any damage. Um, health, you're probably going to want to boost your health as high as possible, her speed, uh, get it you know as good as you can, uh, and then probably a bunch of defense as well. So again, we're looking at another unit where she's down to four stats, health, speed, defense, and effectiveness, and that's it, right? Um, if you want to go for a fifth or you want to replace like defense, right? You can probably uh, build effect resistance if you want, but you're still going to be lacking a lot. Um, and she's immune to stun anyway, right? So that's, that's kind of what bothers me about the effect resistance is like no one's going to build for it, so it's going to be a base 18 all the time. Uh, and it's just a wasted awakening stat. So I'm not sure why they keep doing this to certain units. Like some units like Isaria, she got 30 effectiveness, right? But then we get here and then she gets like half of her effectiveness, which she could also have 30 gets dumped into effect resistance, not even like health or anything. Uh, and it's just sitting there. No one's going to touch it, and it's not really worth anything because the more effect resistance you build on her, the more worthless like her S2 passive is. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I don't know. I mean, not the whole passive, but most of the passive. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. That's kind of dumb. Uh, but I can understand why they wouldn't want to just like give her 36% effectiveness plus the 23% because we're just all going to triple S her as soon as she comes out. Uh, at least most of us anyway i mean you know for those of you who are newer uh sorry but you'll have to wait i guess um 
but yeah, so you, you don't want to build any crit stats or anything like that. All you want is the effectiveness, health, speed, and uh, and defense. Um, she doesn't have any shoes, which I find kind of interesting. Actually, I want. It makes me wonder now because I think regular Angelica has shoes, but I'm not sure if the if uh, Singelica has shoes. I don't know. That's just a weird thing to notice because I was like staring at the screen for a while. Uh, so immune to stun. So like I said, you're kind of wasting this. The more effectiveness you build on her, the more you're wasting the stun immune chance. Because uh, if you're blocking like every debuff, you're also blocking stun. And if you're blocking stun, you're making this worthless. Um, so yeah, it's, it just comes at an opportunity cost. Like you could be using that for something else. Uh, when an ally except the caster's attack increases combat readiness by 8% for each ally attack. So in Guild Wars, she's going to go up 16. In regular arena or RTA, she's going to go up 24. Which is pretty good considering you're probably going to want her really fast. So she's going to just like... She's either going to take first turn or if again, if you're fighting against someone who is like really high speed, she's going to um, she's gonna push up enough to like cut in the middle of something, right? Um, so basically, I mean, like, to me, the way you kind of want to build her is you kind of want to build her the same as, uh, what's his name? You guys know what his name is, um, Balls and Seasons, um, where he cuts, like, you kind of want him decently fast, and you want him, you know, you want the other stats that he also wants, and then, like, also just have him cut stuff, um, but she's gonna be a little better, because we're about to see what her S3 does, and it's ridiculous, but for now, so, even, like, even, even if, like, funnily enough, she, she... And this is getting into her S3 beforehand, but she basically she's a better replace she's a better replacement for Basar because now you can't miss against fire. Um, you can't soul burn for effect resistance immunization, but I think that's fine personally. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's up to you. Like because Basar, there's a lot of teams that don't even have any fire units, so Basar would be fine in there, right? Like you know, you're basically just 100 percent, and then you soul burn, and then everyone gets like freaking. Um, deep debuffed and there's a chance that they can just resist with uh angelica so that's kind of a 50 50 they're, they're both kind of have like she's not a 100 percent replacement but like uh, she's pretty damn good because not only does she have higher base speed because i looked up his base speed beforehand he has like 105 or 108 or something like that and she has 112 so, so not only is she faster uh so she can be a better opener than basar she's also a decent counter to basar because basar's gonna s3 reduce everybody's um reduce everyone's um, combat readiness by 30, but she gets 24%, so she's only losing 6%, which basically means she could probably take a turn. And then on top of that, she dispels his unbuffable and then gives everyone skill nullifier. Like, I don't know. She's just ridiculous. Like, she's better than Basar, I think, personally. I'd probably use her more than... Well, I mean, I don't use Basar at all, but, like, finally I have my own uh, unit that I can just run and have her, like, debuff and strip uh, and then unblockable. Uh, so yeah, uh, so this is pretty good. Uh, once every three turns, which is fine because you only need to, you basically only need it on turn one. Um, what's interesting to me though is that you can make her really tanky, uh, and this passive will always trigger. So like this is only once every three turns, but this is always going to trigger. So the more they hit people that aren't sinful Angelica, the more she's just going to boost up and start like wreaking havoc and doing things you don't want her to be doing. Uh, so I think that's kind of interesting, especially because she's going to be tanky. So if they're going to dedicate time to killing her, um, that's like wasted damage, and your other damage dealers can like start hitting people. Uh, so I don't know. I think Sifu, I think uh, New Angelica is going to be pretty good. Um, yeah. So this is pretty good. Now, granted, she's not going to be the best against uh, like Cerise still because she's just going to get. Um, uh, limited or whatever uh, she's gonna get restricted so she can't boost up uh she'll cleanse one but then at that point it's kind of too late because one of one like both of those are pretty bad uh so we see that and i guess they'll show us the animation for it funnily enough they show her against uh cerise <laughs> and then they bring uh, G-Perg. So she got to move forward, and they have enough effect resistance on her that she didn't get any of them placed on her. Oh, is that Spirit's Breath? Oh my gosh, dude, that's ridiculous. So basically that refreshes. So every time someone does an AoE attack on you, you're... Str oh my god. Dude, you're you're cleansing one debuff every time, and every time someone AOEs you, you're putting up another skill nullifier. That's ridiculous. 
I can't even. I don't even know. I don't, I, I'm not even. No, I'm not qualified to review this anymore. I don't know. I. I, I just want to like leave. I just want to leave the room right now. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. Um, I need to go get some spirits breaths and put them on her so that every turn she gets AoE, uh, she cleanses into another skill nullifier. Good gosh, man! Why would you show that in the in the showcase? That's that's messed up. <laughs> that's so messed up. What the hell? Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, I mean, again, it doesn't like make her broken. But gosh, damn, that's dumb. I can't believe that. That's insanity. Uh, dispels two buffs from all allies, which is pretty good. Now, granted, Bizarre strips all buffs. Like, there's no, like, number limit. It's just they're all gone. Uh, so that's kind of the other, you know, the other one. Uh, but gives unable to be buffed, which she should be going first, usually, um, in your team. Like, it, she, basically, she'll go first whenever Bizarre could go first. So if Bizarre lost first turn that match, then she wouldn't have taken first turn. Uh, so they get unbuffable, which is good, right? I think we all we all love unbuffable because um, Kitty Armin and Elena are running around on defenses these days, and they're well. Let's just say they're beyond irritating. Um, so yeah, unbuffable into silence, no less. Uh, it's pretty good. Now, one of the problems being that the unbuffable goes into the silence, which means that like Elena. Is gonna hold her S3 because she's silenced and the unbuffable is not gonna do anything. Now she's gonna try doing it next turn, but by then she probably cleansed it or something, or something's gone. So this is the same thing with Kitty Armin, where like if you silence her, she's not gonna put up the S3, so the unbuffable is not gonna do anything until one turn later. And by the time we're at one turn later, there's enough RNG that maybe like someone cleanses it or something like that. Like if you're running against the, like an Elena, like she has cleansing on her S1 and you're people are running around counter and whatnot um damn i'm still i'm still i'm still reeling from that s2 that's spirit's breath s2 because that's just insane uh could you imagine fighting against that like every turn like you accidentally pick too much aoe and like just every turn is skill nullifier like that's insanity yeah that's insanity uh especially like now, let's say you just for some reason you're you're dumb enough to pick like what's her name uh rem and like you're opening two picks or something like that in rta or your first pick like he just picks uh angelic angelica and you're countering con like every counter you do you know wipes away the uh, skill nullifier only to have it reapplied and have that unhealable uh cleansed and basically, you're, you you don't do anything. Not only that, but Sinful Angelica gets boosted up twenty four percent every single time she counters. That's just dumb. <laughs> That's just insanity, dude. That's ridiculous. Uh, that that artifact should have never been made. Like it's already ridiculous now on on Oxlots who can just like every turns S two. <laughs> like he's ba like he's basically a. A copy of what like he basically just becomes a clone of whatever damage dealer you want on your team so if like for some reason you're running him with like uh, rem, uh remnant violet you basically have two remnant violet remnant gremlin uh you basically have two riolus on your team just constantly killing everything like oh my gosh that artifact is garbage i hate it so much like yeah anyway uh so yeah this is kind of what the only problem i foresee with this is the fact that like it's not just an unbuffable like on ai uh, but in RTA, this is undoubtedly just a good thing because this way, if you if you manage to land it on a Basar or land it on a um, Maid Chloe or something, the silence is obviously very strong and, and you get just nothing but um, effectiveness or nothing but uh, effect chance on here. So it's 100% to get the unbuffable into the silence. So um, I think that's pretty good. You know, granted, the 15% is going to screw you over sometimes, but sometimes it'll help like if you're playing Arena. Uh, regular arena then you know you didn't silence them but you got the debuff the, the unable to be buffed for two turns so kitty armin goes and then she she just s3s and doesn't do anything because you know you're all you're all uh, they're all unable to be buffed um so i guess we can look at the animation for that so this is kind of what i was talking about like so from what well okay actually no it's not what i'm talking about but cerise is like immune here which is fine and as you can see there like the what's her name 
the Rowana got silenced, which is pretty good because then the Rowana can't do anything other than just S1, which means that you don't get the massive heal and you don't have to worry about the, the, the revive and you can just kill everyone. And by the time it's her turn again, because they're usually so slow, uh, that by the time it's her turn again, uh, she's just going to like S3 herself and then it's just easy to just single target her and just kill her. Uh, then her, her last one is uh, her S1 gives you a chance to silence. Um, you get decreased combat readiness by 25% uh, if they're already silenced. Well, after attacking, when the target is silenced after attacking, decreases combat readiness of that target by 25%. Uh, that, but that works like if you're using Maid Chloe, if someone's already stunned because of someone else and you hit with the S1 and then the S1 doesn't stun because you'll see the little marker like come up. It's like, oh, stun, even though they're already stunned. Um, so even when that doesn't come up and Maid Chloe does that, you still get the CR push, uh, which means that she's still going to get the CR um, pushback on her S1. Even if, like, like she's going to S3, everyone's silenced. Something, maybe, hope maybe something will happen, and then she'll take her, you know, her, her CR pushes forward, uh, and then, you know, just take her turn normally. And then, you know, one of them, hopefully one of them is still silenced, and then you hit them, and then you reduce their... their their combat readiness by 25%, thus extending the duration of the silence, right? Uh, of course, you could also just, you know, a 75% chance to silence someone else, right? Uh, 60, yeah, 75. So 75% chance to just newly silence someone else. Uh, and that's this is also not including, this is not counting the fact that, like, you could, you could probably run around like Abyssal Crown uh, and then just get free stuns as well. Um, so you have a 75% chance to, to silence, or a 24% chance to stun, right? And for those of you who know anything about probability, when you do ors, like so if this is going to happen or this is going to happen, you get to add those those chances together. And, you know, so theoretically you have 75 plus 24 is 99% chance. So there's a 99% chance that one of them is going to happen. Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's, what, that's very strong, uh, which is, you know, what, what makes like Dizzy so good on Abyssal Crown, right? Because it's like, 25% base on the S1 uh, and then 24 from the the Abyssal Crown. So basically it turns into a 50%. So it's like 49%. Uh, so yeah, so for those of you who, who are learning probability or, or need a refresher, yeah, so when it's or, when it's like we, like I take a coin, if we flip, if I get a coin and I flip it heads and it either comes up tails or heads, then that's 100% chance because it can't come up any other thing, right? It's going to come up one of them. Um, yeah. So with this, th but these are theoretical probabilities, right? So there's a 75% chance to silence, but it's just kind of an imaginary 75%. Like when you flip a coin, the only outcomes that are on there, it's like 50 and 50. The only outcomes that are on there are either you get the one side or the other side. Um, with this, it's, they're, they're kind of imaginary. So you get like a 75% chance could just, you know, you could just not stun forever. Um, and if you get like... Even if something else that came out, like another artifact came out, because they're independent of each other, um, you can't guarantee one is going to happen, but kind of theoretically, it, it kind of turns out that, that way. Um, yeah, so theoretically, you have a 99% chance for something to happen, um, but in all honesty, it's probably just still going to be 75% chance, even with Abyssal Crown on. Um, we can kind of look at this here. Uh, so I guess the last thing... Uh, now that we've reviewed all the characters, the last thing I wanna I wanna talk about is the um, that we get a uh, a character recall. Yeah. Is that we get a character recall uh, for ML Leo, which is pretty fantastic because that just means that I am going to finally get uh, ML Kawazu and I didn't have to pull for him, so that's pretty cool. Uh, basically, the other thing I wanted to mention was she is on the rotation with. Um, What's his name? With Specimen Says, which I don't think is going to be... I don't know. I already have Specimen Says, so I can't pull for her, which, you know, that kind of sucks. But it kind of gives me... Um, it kind of gives me hope for the future going forward that, like, uh, we'll get another four-star recall at some point, and I can just pick Angelica, right? So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so if anybody was wondering what I'm taking, it's going to be ML Kawazu. Um, Granted, one of the so ML Leo, one of the, the one of the things with ML Leo is like, oh, you know, bombs are better now. You know, maybe he's going to be broken, and maybe he is. 
but for one, I have like 14 copies of MLEO, so I don't really don't care. Uh, but for two, the thing I want to point out is bombs were improved, but they were improved in a way that we didn't, most of us didn't really know they didn't work that way, right? So, I mean, I would have imagined, like when you told me Leo has bombs, I would have, they would have, you know, I would have figured that the bomb would have detonated on immunity or uh, not immunity, on invincibility, right? I thought that's how that should have worked, but it turns out it didn't and now they fixed it. My initial impression of that ability was the way it is now, right? People are like, oh, bombs are improved, but bombs have, are improved up to the point that I thought they should have been when I when they started. I didn't know that they were worse than they are now. So I have, to me, Leo has been at this level of how good he is the whole time, and I still didn't want to build him. So now that these bombs are being improved to, like, match what I thought it should have been in the first place, what I thought it was in the first place, it's not really going to change my opinion on it. So I don't know. That, that's something that's important to realize. Uh, but the fact that we have... The other thing I want to mention is that there might be a chance that maybe Leo might start seeing meta play because if we do start seeing um, Iceria in a lot of stuff, maybe Leo might start creeping into the meta because he can apply more bombs and detonate more bombs. So it's like two bombers on the same team might be good. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be good, um, but it's something to consider for a lot of you guys. Uh, don't just throw away your Leos because like, if you don't have an extra. I mean, I I'm fortunate enough to have an extra, so I'll probably keep one around. I'm probably, like I said, I'm probably still not going to build them. Um, but it's important for a lot of you people out there to realize if you don't have uh, an extra Leo sitting around that um, Oh man, this is kind of interesting. I just realized you could see everything I've been like watching for the past like uh, Week like there's smite and there's a uh, Starcraft. I haven't actually been watching this in a while, but there's that anyway um, Yeah, so that's kind of the bottom line is is Keep in mind, like, I, I think we should be cautious or optim or, or, or kind of like, yeah, just cautious with Leo because I feel like maybe he, um, we might start seeing more of him if Iceria starts picking up a lot. Uh, cause, you know, having two bombers on the same team, you know, maybe, maybe it'd be bad. Maybe it's kind of like an opportunity cost. You could be running something else, uh, because you've already got one very good bomber. Um, but maybe maybe it does maybe it's multiplicative, right? Maybe having the two bombers just makes it insane. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but the fact there's only two bombers and RTA doesn't really like facilitate when you need two specific units um, to pull, you know, some degeneracy off. I think that might be kind of like uh, a killing blow. So we, we might have to wait till someone else has bombs. Then you know, then we'll start seeing some crazy like. Then maybe we might start seeing more Leo. Because like in RTA, you can draft like all three of them and they can only ban one or something like that or just kind of force them into like banning something else and you get your two bombers. I don't know. Like I said, it just seems crazy. The, I mean, the fact that like Iceria kind of does everything, like one of the things about bombers was that like, that, that to me anyway, was that like, you know, you have bombers then you have like, you have setups and then you have bomb and you have detonators. And that to me was like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of interesting to have to see some of these units get paired together that way. But because RTA, how RTA works, that's in, that's basically impossible to set up. But on top of that, um, they just kind of took the lazy route because every bomber in the game has a way to detonate their bombs, right? Like, Leo has bombs and one of his skills detonates the bombs. And then, obviously, Asaria can detonate bombs. So, like, there's no reason to run these characters in a team when they're so self-sufficient the problem with Leo is that he's not self-sufficient enough. Uh, and one of the things with um, Isaria is she's looking to be insanely self-sufficient. Um, so if you bring in like multiple Taga Hells, you're just like bombing everyone. Um, so that's kind of like, like that's one of the things with Isaria is that she can work alone, but pairing her with other people is going to just make her insane. Cause like all the time, like a bunch of Taga Hells and a bunch of soul burns, like, the problem was that you can only you can only bomb three people. But now with a, with a, with the Taga Hells, you know you get an extra one, and that's four bombs, and then you just detonate them all. And now it's like their whole turn has been erased. Um, but like I said, th that's kind of like only in an ideal scenario. A lot of people are going to be running people that are faster than you. They're going to be running like counters, like bus like uh, not Basar, um, like you know maybe DJ Basar. Uh, who could probably has like more effect resistance than you have or you know so it's important to realize like don't get too excited about like oh you know bombs we're just gonna like destroy the meta bombs are gonna be as debilitating as any other debuff has ever been um 
but you know, yeah. So I don't know. That, that's just that's kind of something to, to keep in mind is that um, the usual debuff counters are still going to be in effect here, and I think what this means is that at some point we should be getting another like debuff countering unit, which I think would be great. Um, we kind of already got one in Rem, so when someone dies, Rem's just immune to all debuffs, so she, nothing can happen to her. Uh, and then she can just kind of hit people until they die constantly. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, those are my thoughts. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I kind of rambled on for like an hour now uh, on two units. Um, but yeah, so you know, hopefully someone found this helpful. And hopefully we can look back on this and, and see whether I was right or wrong. Uh, see whether I was as stupid as... Um, as Shotgun Shogun, or I was as smart as somebody who's in who, somebody in this community who's smart, because I think we're all kind of idiots. But um, I think at the bottom end, the, we can all agree that at the bottom end, it's it's just, it's just Shogun down there. Um, but yeah, so anyway, hopefully you guys all could take something away from this and uh, you know go forward from here. And good luck summoning whenever she comes out. I think in a week from now, or a week from Wednesday, maybe. Oh yeah, a week from the Wednesday patch. Uh, so oh yeah, today is Wednesday, idiot. Uh, a week from today's patch, so later later on today, I think. Yeah, like at 8. Well, for, for my time zone anyway. Uh, but yeah, good luck to you guys, and uh, I'll see you guys in the Fire Emblem video if anybody uh, has, if there's any crossover between the fans here.